I'm back on the Gloss Up Fly today, and today you find me at Broad Bottom Station. Stop giggling. <laughs> See, I'm giggling now, to be honest with you, but anyway. And today's video is seeing the remaining stations of the Gloss Up Line as I visit the remaining stations, including my trip to Denting, which, to be honest, I'm looking forward to. Raw Bottom Station opened on the 10th of December 1842 by the Sheffield, Ashton, Underlime and Manchester Railway. However though, it was opened as Broad Bottom but in 1845 it was actually relayed to Mottram. Now in 1884 it was relayed to Mottram and Broad Bottom, but it wasn't reverted back to the name Broad Bottom until 1954 when this line was electrified as part of the Woodhead route between Manchester London Road slash Piccadilly and Sheffield Victoria. Raw Bottom is a very lovely station. It's got a lovely station building, but inside that station building, it's also got a Cheshire Best Kept Station sign. Makes me wonder how many stations have Cheshire Best Kept Station signs. But the funny thing is, we're actually not in Cheshire. We're actually in the Greater Manchester area. But the final three stations I'm looking at are actually in the county of Derbyshire. So we'll be crossing the border from Greater Manchester into Derbyshire as I catch the 0954 Northern service to Hadfield and we're going to take a trip to Dinting. However though, it is running about six, seven minutes late. But that's alright because I've got two hours planned at Dinting. So we have now crossed the border from Greater Manchester into Derbyshire and right behind me is the Triangle Junction Dinting but it's not actually a Triangle Junction station but this is the junction for services to Hadfield and Glossop divert off the Glossop line. The platforms behind me are the Hadfield bound platforms. So as a train terminates at Glossop they actually use these platforms to go to Hadfield and then they go to Glossop and double back to Hadfield before they reach Dinting. But our trains today are terminating at Hadfield so they're using this platform instead right behind me here. And trains go towards Glossop first but they double back at Glossop to go to Hadfield and then once at Hadfield they terminate to head back towards Glossop and then back to Denting. So all the trains today will be using this platform right behind me here. So when Dinting Station opened, it was actually named Glossop when it opened in 1842 by the Sheffield, Ashton, Underlime and Manchester Railway. Now in 1845 the branch line to Glossop opened and this station was relayed to Glossop Junction. 1847 a temporary station was built but the site that we're standing on opened in 1848. Now there was a problem because you want to get to Glossop, you can only get to Glossop from the Hatfield direction. There was no direct link from Manchester to Glossop until that was rectified in 1884 when they built the West to South Line so trains from Manchester could go straight to Glossop. Now the line towards Hadfield used to be double track because this used to be the main line from Manchester to Sheffield, part of the Woodhead route. 
which saw trades carry on towards Periston and onto Sheffield Victoria. But to be honest, this station is really a shadow of its former glory. It's still got the platforms in, so it does have some disused platforms here. But on the glossop bound platform, I think the station building has seen better days, to be honest. Now, I said at Broadbottom, we've got two hours here at Dinton because the plan is now is to leave Dinton Station and take a walk or take a trip. And behind me here, before we enter Dinton Station, is Dinton Biaduct. And we're going to take a look at Dinton Biaduct right now. So back in 2021, I actually did a video when I visited Broadbottom and Dinton. As of walking down this path here to try and find Dinton Biaduct, the minute I stopped filming, I tripped over and landed on the floor here. And that's why, as I always say, take a trip to Dinton. Because I tripped over and landed on the floor. I did hurt myself, to be honest. But Dinton Biaduct is actually just here where I'm pointing at right now. That is Dinton Biaduct, which we are looking for. But I'm going to go to the other side of the viaduct so I'll give you a closer look at it. So right behind me is Dinty Viaduct and honestly that viaduct is very impressive. Now it started constructed in 1842 and it was finished on the 8th of August 1844. And it crosses over Dinty Vale, Glossop Brook and the A57. Now between 1918 to 1920 the bridge was actually strengthened with extra pillars added to strengthen the viaduct. Unfortunately, the viaduct actually claimed the lives of three people as well because in 1855 it was a dark September and the train that was heading back towards Glossop stood on the viaduct because unfortunately the station at the time at Dinty was busy full of trains. Unfortunately, the passengers on the train for that Dinty viaduct was actually Dinty station. The power pits of the viaduct looked like the platform edge of the station. Two people got out of their seats, left the train Unfortunately, they fell off the viaduct and landed to their deaths. They were John Healy and Jane Hadfield. And a third person also got out of his seat, opened the door, and he also fell off the viaduct as well, Thomas Priestnell. Unfortunately, though, when they found the bodies, he was still alive, so they took him to Dinty Station, but unfortunately, at Dinty Station, he passed away. So before I head back to the station, there is something else I want to show you as well, because there is an engine shed around this area, but it is definitely disused. So I'm going to show you where this engine shed is before I head back to Dinton Station. So I managed to find what I'm looking for after walking through a lot of mud to be honest with you. But the building I'm looking for is actually just in view right now and that is the engine shed at Dinton. It's now abandoned and disused. But where I'm currently at used to be the Dinton Railway Centre which closed in 1991. It was also the headquarters at MS Jubilee Steam Locomotive 45596 Bahamas. We also had steam locomotives here like the Flying Scotsman, Mallard and Blue Peter. But honestly, this is a lovely area to take a look and explore. Being inside Dinted Edge is just absolutely magnificent. It's just a lovely explore you have in the Dinted area. But I've got to head back to the railway station now because the next train, hopefully, if I can catch it, it's the 1159 service to Hadfield. But I'm going to gloss up next.
after a successful trip to Dintin, we're now at the penultimate station, this is Glossop. And Glossop's just got the one platform, it's always been a terminus station when the line was built in 1845. We shall explain about the history of Glossop station in a second. Now the 323s that serve this line, they actually got a turnaround time at Glossop, about two or three minutes before they had to come in and head out to head towards Hadfield or Dinted when they go back towards Manchester, Piccadilly. So when the Sheffield, Ashton, the Lyme and Manchester Railway built the Glossop branch in 1845, Glossop station was opened on the 9th of June 1845 to freight. All traffic was opened by June 1845 at the end of the month. Now in 1922 it was actually relayed to Glossop Central but that lane was reverted back to Glossop in 1974. So the plan now is to catch the 1235 Northern service to get us to Hadfield, our final station. Now I'm filming this on the 6th of December, but between the 1st of December and the 9th of December, there's an overtime ban with the train drivers at Aslef. And also this morning there has been a few cancellations on this line due to problems at the depot. But apparently the 1235 to Hadfield is actually cancelled pay due to a broken down train so unfortunately I can't catch the 12.35 to Hadfield now so I'm going to have to wait half an hour later to catch the 13.05 Northern Series to take us to Hadfield. So we're now on the 3005 Northern service and this will take us to Hadfield, our final station we're stopping off at. So we have now made it to the end of the line, Hadfield. And Hadfield opened on the 7th of August 1844 by the Sheffield, Ashton under Lyme and Manchester Railway. When it was open though, it was a through station, it had two platforms. Now services beyond Hadfield towards Penistone and Sheffield Victoria ceased in 1970. Trains were kept running though for freight until 1981 when the line beyond Hadfield towards Penistone closed. fascinated by the Woodhead route. I actually do like it to be honest and I'm actually a fan of what's a busy bay line between Manchester London Road and Sheffield Victoria which saw electric trains passing through stations like Hadfield but now this line is in its shadow its former glory and it's just here for commuter trains but to be honest though visiting every station on the Glossop line between Manchester Piccadilly, Glossop and Hadfield has really been very entertaining and 
very interesting and enjoyable. But I'm going to pop the playlist for the series right here. You feel free to give that a click. You have to see the other two. People on screen now, YouTube channel modes and patient supporters. Thank you for supporting the channel. I've been Cyber Trace. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. I'll see you on board for the Cyber Express for a new video down the line in the future. And have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year.